Fernando Alonso is one of the hottest topics in the Formula 1 world. After Hamilton's departure to Ferrari, and while the Silver Arrows have pinpointed their hopes on the super young Kimi Antonelli, it seems like the option to sign a two-time world champion and experienced driver like Alonso is just too good to be passed on. With this in mind, could we see Alonso accept the opportunity after his agent and Wolf were pictured having dinner together? And more importantly, what does this imply for Mercedes' future? It's safe to say that Mercedes has a very difficult mission when it comes to replacing Hamilton, but it's not something that cannot be done considering the greatness of the team in of itself. The W15 does seem like a challenging car, one that's been set on the right development path, and if the car turns out to be highly competitive, as the team hopes so, then 2025 will definitely be very similar in terms of race wins and championship fights. This is definitely what Alonso would love to have in the ending stages of his career, especially now that Mercedes needs a heavily competitive driver to give a lot of feedback on which points could be improved on the car and how they can win a championship before the new regulations or in the first year of it. Alonso has expressed his wish to sign a multi-year contract with Mercedes if all stars align, and the fact that his former team boss and current manager, Flavio Briatore, had an official meeting with Toto Wolff discussing matters to a further extent goes to show that this is not that far-fetched of a scenario after all. The Spaniard is not immune to all the talks related to him, and when the media asked him about whether or not he was considering this seat, the two-time world champion said, If I want to keep racing beyond this year, the first and only talk at the beginning will be Aston Martin. I trust this project and that will be my first priority, but if we cannot reach an agreement, I know that I'm attractive to other teams. I will stay in Formula 1 just to have fun. I'm not that kind of person and not that kind of driver. Let's see what the options are. Right now, the development path of Mercedes does seem a bit more promising than the one that Aston Martin has embarked on, even though the Brackley Bay squad embarked on a brand new journey regarding the philosophy and the design of the car. And the Silverstone based team is following a path set during the 2022 winter break led by Dan Fallows, former head of aerodynamics at Red Bull and the current technical director of Aston Martin. And the situation is loud and clear. If Aston Martin is not faster and outperforms Mercedes, then there will be nothing binding for Alonso in the green team. When talking about this matter even further, Alonso said that he knows his worth, further adding, I'm aware of my situation, which is very unique. There are only three world champions on the grid, and I'm the only one available for 2025, so I'm in a good position. On a move to Mercedes, there's been nothing at all. I know the driver market has started earlier this year, but this will not affect me in terms of preparing for the season. It makes a lot of sense for Mercedes to pull Alonso in the seat, and while many are believing that it's Kimi Antonelli who would be replacing the seven-time world champion due to Wolf not wanting to miss out on the next Verstappen, it's kind of strange to think that Mercedes will go out of their way and promote somebody after just one year in F2 and with zero experience in F1 whatsoever. Even Wolf said that this would be nothing more than pure distraction for Antonelli when it comes to linking him to the Mercedes seat throughout the 2024 season, as he has one goal ahead of himself, perform well in Formula 2. Yes, the initial tests are very good, and it does seem like Antonelli is already seconds faster than his colleagues from F2 in the tests that they've run with F3 machines, even though he's yet to try out an F3 car in his career and skip this championship. However, Wolf kept the expectations low, and when talking about putting Antonelli in what would be the W16, he went on to say, Kimi has been with Mercedes since he was 11. He's been in the junior program, and his junior career was very successful. I think most important at this stage is that he concentrates on F2. I think we start to spin his mind or unleash rumours in the media onto him, that's not going to help his F2 campaign. He's just stepped out of carts a few years ago, and he's not even 18. So, I would rather not start any speculation about Kimi going into F1 at that stage. However, Wolf has also pointed out that maybe the time to sign a bold driver like Antonelli might have come for Mercedes, and there is little to nothing that they can do about it, as the move of Hamilton to Ferrari should surprise no one regarding the next move they'll be making. 
Of course, Antonelli and Alonso are two polar opposites of drivers, contrasts of experience and youth, and it's very likely that Mercedes would think twice before signing the driver next to Russell, considering the fact that both options provide such a different landscape for the team. If they intend on signing Alonso, it automatically means a championship contender has joined the team, and the two-time world champion would settle for nothing less. He might need a year to adapt himself to the car, maybe not even that much, but once he's settled in and comfortable with the setup of the W15, or what could be the W16, then it's safe to say that Russell would have a very difficult mission until the Spaniard is part of the team. And this might not gel with what Mercedes has been stating about Russell, as Wolf said that he's looking at the next leader of the team in Russell, and therefore the next teammate should be more oriented towards this scenario. This is why the decision will take some time, as Wolf said, as the Austrian doesn't want to be rushed into a decision, especially now that a couple of contracts have been signed from superstars like Leclerc and Norris. However, the last thing they want to be doing at this point is making Alonso wait. Because while the Spaniard has no options whatsoever, there's always Red Bull and the second seat next to Verstappen, in which Alonso would be showing Mercedes that they made a huge mistake by passing on him. Yes, it would mean that he might not be the number one driver in the team next to Verstappen, but it would definitely mean he could beat Mercedes in a fair and square battle if the dominance of the Austrian team continues. But right now, the priorities of the two-time world champion, apart from Aston Martin, lie with signing a long-term deal with Mercedes, which is what has been likely discussed in the meeting between Briatore and Wolf. However, judging by Hamilton's situation, the Brackley-based squad is not ready to give away long-term contracts to drivers while nearing the end of their careers. So it's very likely that if Alonso wants to join Mercedes by all means, he would have to settle for the short-term contractual situation. This is a topic that's been shed some light on by Peter Winter, who went on to say, Would Mercedes sign the long-term deal that Fernando would presumably want? But having said that, if Mercedes rang up Fernando and said, Look, we're only going to offer you a one-year deal with an option on our side, but you've got the Mercedes race seat alongside George Russell if you want it for one year, hopefully two, do you want it or not? I think Fernando will probably take it, actually. It depends on how he goes in the Aston Martin. Nobody's talking about Aston, but they may be up there with Mercedes this year, maybe better than Mercedes. It's an interesting situation for Mercedes, get an even older driver than Hamilton. Would they do that? Red Bull didn't sign Fernando because they think he's quite divisive in a team. And yes, he's probably mellowed a bit. And at Aston Martin, he's had to tow the line a bit and be nice to Lance, and that's all going quite well. He's obviously still really quick and really good. I suppose it's possible, anything's possible. With this in mind, there is a lot at stake for both sides, but it's very likely that if this collaboration happens anytime soon, it would benefit Alonso a lot more than Mercedes, because while they definitely need the type of driver Alonso is, they also have a future superstar in Kimi Antonelli, and they do not need to rush things from their side. So, do you think that Alonso is a proper choice for Hamilton's replacement? Let us know in the comments down below.